One of the most frequent comments I get is, why is my shop so small? Well, sometimes I wonder the same thing. So I'm actually looking at building a brand new shop. But before I do that, I would like to try it out with a scale model first. <laughs> Now I'm not looking at building a huge new shop, but rather I'm looking at building a tiny new shop. Just a shop a bit bigger than this one. This shop is 10 feet by 10 feet with a ceiling height at the side wall of just over 5 feet, which isn't a lot of space. Now if I had time to complain, I'd say I wish I had three things. Number one, higher ceilings. Higher ceilings would allow me to store more lumber. Lumber takes time to acclimatize in a workshop before you can start using it. And if your ceiling height is really low, you are losing out on all that lovely space where I could be putting a lumber rack. Number two, I'd like a little bit more floor space so that I can break down a sheet of plywood in the middle of the winter. I do have the annex tent outside, but it's minus 20 out today and the last thing you want to do on a day like today is stand out in the cold breaking down a sheet of plywood. Number three, which is more or less like number one, but I would like normal wall height because walls are important storage areas in any workshop and I've pretty much filled up all the walls in this one. I'd like to have a regular size wall so that I could put up more stuff. Otherwise, I rather like the small shop. So what does this have to do with model trailers? Well, I've been fascinated by this tiny house on wheels movement and alternative shelters in general, really. And I was staring a few months ago at the 18-foot cargo trailer that I have sitting out in the yard that I don't really need anymore. And I thought, hmm, if you can build a house on that, why can't you build a workshop on that? This video is the first of a three-part series on modeling my new workshop. Now, in this video, I'm going to take in this video, I'm going to take you through how I use the X carve to make a 112 scale model of my 18 foot cargo trailer. Uh, part two is going to be fairly short, and it's just about making scale model framing lumber. And so part three will be actually modeling the shop with the scale lumber on top of the scale model trailer. The whole purpose of this exercise is to find out uh, if I can do it, uh, should I do it, and what processes are going to be involved in completing a workshop construction project of that nature. So without further ado, here's how I made the scale model of the 18 foot cargo trailer using the X-Carve. So here I am getting into Microsoft Image Composer, which is the ancient graphics software from uh, front page 98. I'm using a grid to lay out the trailer on. The grid was just scammed from a, a PDF of shop layout information that I, I must have found on a website. It looks like this. And I just cut and paste as much of the grid as I need. I'm, I'm sure I got that in the 90s sometime from a woodworking magazine. So all I'm doing is blocking out the actual shape of the trailer uh, just in with black blocks. And I just need to make sure that everything is the correct size and, and uh, shape. And then once all the pieces are on, I flatten the thing and turn it into a bitmap file. Sorry for the um, wiggling of the mouse there. And I do the same thing for the, uh, for the wheel wells. Just draw a couple of wheels that are the right size and then link them together. And the wheel well itself is basically just a box that I rounded off the corners. I won't go through the whole thing. It's just basically, it's the same thing. You're just cutting and pasting together black figures. And you'll see in here when I go into my layout stuff, I've got a file for the wheel wells, a file for the trailer, and a file for the decorations. Now the decorations were just made by taking um, the finished wheel well and overlaying, just with a different color, overlaying uh, the two circles for the hubs and the circle for the wheel outline. And the reason why you need that is if you really want to see the detail, the top of the wheel, uh, once the thing's carved out. And I figured that I might as well under the circumstances. Um, you're going to need that. So you're basically just making four circles and overlaying them over top of the wheel well shape 
and then I just link them all together and turn them black and that becomes the other shape. Now you'll see to the left, there's also the top of the wheel well on that particular picture. You don't really need that. Um, you just need the wheel hubs and the outline of the wheel. And then once that's done, and then everything's saved as a, as a bitmap, I searched free online SVG converter and came up with audio, autotracer.org which I prefer because I don't have to, I don't have any limit as to what I can do. And I just take the file, and there's three of them, the outline, uh, the wheel wells, and the decorations. And you want to convert them to scalable vector graphics. And that doesn't take very long to do. Just wait for the processing. And then you'll end up with a, a link where you can right-click and download the file. Should be coming, there it is. You right-click and download the file. And uh, once that's done, you can go into Easel. And here I am going into Easel. Uh, sign in, and you just import from SVG the file that you want. And there happens to be the trailer outline. Now, this is the key. I have the outline, but I want to actually cut. Or I have the shape, but I actually want to cut the outline. So you select Outline from the Cut. And make sure you use Tabs. And that will do your outline for you. And then basically, I have two files. I have one where I've got the decorations, so the hubs and the outline of the wheels, plus some wording that I threw in there. And then I have a second file for the stuff that's actually cut out, which is the outline of the wheel wells, which is also just put the shape in there and click outline, and the outline of the trailer. The reason why I have two files is because the wheel decorations and the wording is done with a smaller bit and shallower and the outlines are actually chopped out with a bigger bit to make it a little bit faster. it all to heck, eh? I started making my 
working on making my miniature framing lumber and I realized that on my trailer the center of these wheels is supposed to be 87 inches from the back of the trailer and I made it 8 foot 7 from the back of the trailer so they're too far forward. And I was in a rush to get them on so they're glued and they're pneumatically nailed and I'm afraid of taking them off so well back to the x car and make another trailer. So that's the scale model of my 18 foot cargo trailer. Uh, on to part two where I'm going to be showing you very briefly how to measure up and cut the framing lumber. That's pretty simple. It, most people can figure that out pretty simply and it's easily, easily done on a bandsaw. Um, and then we'll move on to part three where I'll actually frame up uh, the tiny workshop on wheels on this model of the, uh, of the cargo trailer. So thanks for watching. Uh, please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you uh, like to see more of these videos coming and have a pleasant day. <laughs> well, I've been getting a lot of comments about my hat. I know this is not a Canadian hat, this is a Mongolian hat. I got it from the guys that brought me my yurt. So, and just in case you're wondering, Mongolian hat, Canadian guy, I don't know what else to say. <laughs>